Hi, I'm Dr. John McLean, and welcome to my YouTube channel. And this will be number 10 on short answers to uh, tough questions. And the question that I'm going to raise today, if we were asking God questions, it would be, God, you do not seem to be fair. Are you fair? Now, I'm not defining fairness in the sense of impartiality or partiality, but more in the sense of equality or uh, equity. Uh, does God treat everybody the same? And uh, my answer is no. Uh, fairness does not seem to be an attribute of God like holiness and love and omnipresence and omniscience and uh, all of the main attributes, justice, righteousness, truth, immutability, immutability, immutability uh, immutable. There we go. And so, uh, and I'm going to use the two passages to uh, suggest this. Uh, again, I, I don't think God in the dispensing of his grace or his mercy uh, or his uh, revelation uh, to individuals is uh, always equal or, the, or fair. Uh, every human being has the revelation of creation, conscience, and providence. We see that in the scripture, uh, but not every uh, person hears the good news of Jesus Christ. God does say, seek me and uh, you will find me and I draw you. So, but here's the one example in Matthew chapter 20, where the he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And uh, you can read this again if you need to, but throughout the day, the landowner uh, goes out and hires more and more people uh, until at the last minute, uh, he calls in the last hour, uh, another laborer to go out into the field. Then he tells the foreman here, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last group to the first. When those hired about the 11th hour came, each one received the, the a denarius, which is a one uh, full payment for uh, one day's work. When those hired First, they thought that they would receive more. I mean, that makes sense to me humanly. Uh, this guy worked an hour, got a denarius. I worked 12 hours. I'm anticipating something more. When those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they grumbled at the landowner, saying, these last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden and the scorching heat of the day. But he answered, and he said to one of them, friend, I am only, I'm not doing you anything wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. But if I wish to give to this last man the same as to you, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own money? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. It wasn't fair to the people listening. It wasn't fair to the person 
who is represented in the parable or the story. But God says, if I want to be generous to someone, then I can be generous. Uh, there doesn't seem to be fairness or equality in this. Now, the next one, uh, I think it illustrates it even more in Matthew 11, 20, and 24. Then Jesus began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles had occurred in Tyre and Sidon, which occurred in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Nevertheless, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will not be exalted to heaven, will you? No. You will descend to Hades. For if the miracles had occurred in Sodom, which occurred in you, it would have remained to this day. Nevertheless, I say to you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Now, the question of is there degrees in hell and judgment, that's something for another time. But what I think we can clearly see, particularly in this last one, is a statement that God chose to limit his miracles in Chorazin and Bethsaida, in Tyre and Sidon. And if he would have chosen more miracles, they would have, could have, maybe should have been brought to repentance. But he didn't. And so... I think we see uh, an inequality, uh, what some humanly might call an unfairness. Uh, we can argue, well, you know, God didn't have to dispense grace and mercy or revelation to any, and that's absolutely true. But he wasn't fair or equal in the dispensing of this revelation, these miracles, clearly from Matthew and from the other parable.